Greetings. The Lord is with you. Uh, I'm Pastor Bob Quaintance from Good Hope Lutheran Church in Youngstown, Ohio, or Boardman. And I'm glad to be with you this evening for our devotion as we're journeying through the Bible one chapter a day, five days a week. And uh, we'll be through the New Testament in, uh, one, in this one year. Uh, tonight, we begin a new book of the Bible, the Paul's letter to the Colossians. So I'm very eager to get into that. We've had vacation Bible school. I've been busy elsewise today with uh, helping out someone. And, um, but, uh, but I am present with you now. It's almost nine. So I know not many will be on, but I see one's clicked on. But we'll, uh, uh, I, I think some will view this later. The, um, and next week I'll be back on my regular schedule, thankfully at 7 o'clock. Um, and uh, I recommend looking at the, um, uh, the Bible Project, a nine-minute video uh, uh, on the book of Colossians. And you can see it here. I've uh, lifted up what, what we have. And uh, I can, uh, uh, it, it's a good little summary. Of the, you don't need the little map thing, but the, the, uh, the diagram. But, but the, just listening to it will give you some good background. Uh, this is written in Paul's imprisonment in Rome, probably around the year 62. Uh, in Acts chapter 19, he had been in Ephesus for two and a half, three years. And during that time, uh, one of the um, uh, Christians... Uh, a man by the name of, oh, my mind has just gone blank. Um, uh, well, it's right at the end of the gospel. Uh, or, or the letter. Ep Epaphras. Um, uh, well, uh, I'm sorry about that. Uh, yeah, Epaphras. Um, I guess I knew it. Um, he, he, uh, brought the word of Christ back to his hometown, kind of up a river away from Ephesus. And um, he uh, brought the gospel to that town and he became the pastor of the church that formed there. He has traveled to Rome. Uh, he's reporting into Paul about all the good things in the church, but he's had a problem. And he's looking for advice and Paul is writing to some advice to this congregation that he had never visited. And uh, I think maybe tomorrow we'll get into the main article of, of that advice about the issue that, that they're uh, uh, dealing with. To be, but it has to do with the preeminence of Christ. If Ephesians was about the church and the unity we have in Christ, uh, Colossians is about the, the Christ of the church um, and, and how preeminent eminent he is. Um, he, he needs nothing added to him. He is not insufficient. He is completely sufficient. And if we add anything to Christ uh, that, that we need to have in the church or in our spiritual life, then Christ is not all in all. And that is, of course, not who he is. He is preeminent in all things. And we'll see that in chapter one as Paul uh, um, talks in glorious language about Christ. So let's get started. Uh, we'll begin by making the sign of the cross and saying we are under the care of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we'll have a short prayer. Thank you, Lord, for the time we have together today. And pray, Lord, you would bless this time in your word and bless your word to your people. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, uh, Paul, um, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother. It, it really, really probably only takes four minutes to read through these chapters, four or five, uh, for a longer chapter um, every day. So you have time. You could even listen to it on your phone. I, I listen to it often on the way to work in addition to, to reading and studying it. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother. Uh, this is his writing to the saints and faithful brothers and sisters in Christ to Colossus, Grace to you and peace from God our Father. He has an opening thanksgiving and prayer. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you, since or, or, or because we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love that you have for all the saints. 
these are the two character traits of, of a Christian. Uh, trust in God and uh, loving God and loving one another. And all this because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. Of this you have heard before in the word of truth, this, this hope uh, that is ours in Christ. This hope you have heard from the word of truth, the gospel, which has come to you as indeed in the whole world it is bearing fruit and increasing, and as it also does among you since the day you heard it and understood uh, the gr grace of God in truth, just as you learned it from Epaphras, there we go, our beloved fellow servant, he is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf and has made known to us your love in the spirit. Man, oh man, oh man. God's word, the gospel, bears fruit. Um, and God, it bore fruit in them through the, the work of a faithful servant, a, a fellow servant of Paul's, Epaphras, a faithful minister of Christ. Isn't that a wonderful affirmation of, of the work of Epaphras for this church? And here he's come to visit Paul in prison. And so... From the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you. And now he's going to talk about what he prays for. He thanks God for that, for their faith and their love and the hope and the fruit that had been born in that church through the work of Epaphras and then through the other believers who spread the message. And so from that day, the day we heard, when he first heard about the formation of the church in Colos, uh, when he was in Ephesus in about 55, 53 A.D., uh, to now A.D. 62, um, we have not ceased to pray for you. Paul has prayed for all the churches. Prayer is a major part of, of this, this letter, a major part of the Christian life. And I am impoverished when I do not pray, going on the strength of Bob instead of the strength of God. And I will never be sufficient. None of us are. Paul is a man of prayer. Praise God for that, and probably a secret to the life, uh, to the, the power of his life. We have not ceased to pray for you, asking, and here's his prayer, that one, you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, that you may know what God wants for you, what his will is, with maturity, with spiritual understanding. It's not worldly. It, it, it's a gift of God's spirit. So that secondly, when you understand what the will is, of God is, that then you may live it out, that you may walk in a manner worthy of the Lord. Paul uses that phrase in different letters. So that you may walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him. This is the goal. Paul prays for it. Now they'll sin, they'll fall down just like Paul, but they'll get back up and they'll run the race that's set before them. Paul prays for them to be filled with the knowledge of God's will so that they can walk in a manner worthy of, God, of, of the Lord, living a life fully pleasing to him, not partially. Lord, that, that's just a prayer we could pray for yourself. And you could pray for me. And you could pray for other loved ones. Lord, help Pastor Bob know your will, submit to your will, and walk in a way that's pleasing to you, Lord fully pleasing you in every area of his life. And that you may bear fruit in every good work. The third thing, know God's will, that you may walk in a manner and that you may bear, bear fruit. These three things. Uh, know his will, walk in a manner according to his will, pleasing the Lord, and that you may bear fruit. Um, other people coming to faith. Bear fruit in every good way, work, increasing in knowledge of God, strengthened with all power according to his glorious might for all endurance and patience with joy giving thanks to the father so so that you may um, bear fruit that you may be strengthened number four uh, with power to endure with patience all that you will go through and number five that you will give thanks uh, in all circumstances paul has said several times here give thanks to the father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. Uh, and then a summary statement. For he, God, has delivered you, delivered us from the domain of darkness 
and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved son in whom we have redemption the forgiveness of sins our lives are just so enriched because we have come to know jesus christ he's transferred us from darkness which is what the world was before god created it and in christ he brings us into the light fully visible what a gift now in order to set up the theme for talking about what Paul is going to be addressing as his concern about about how Christ is all in all he has this um, what um, the book uh, or what the Bible project calls a, a poem about the Messiah about Christ and it has two parts um, about how he created and how he is bringing about the new creation the Christ was there at the present at the at the beginning uh, in the presence of the creation uh, and he is the creator and now in Christ through the death and resurrection he is forming a new creation um, and in these two parts we hear about the preeminence of Jesus verse 15 he is Jesus is the image of the invisible God the firstborn image Adam and Eve made in his image but but sin, Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. Not that Jesus was born, although he was born of Mary, but not born at the beginning. He's always existed. He is God, with God, the triune God. Um, and he is the firstborn. He's the firstborn from the dead, uh, resurrection, and he's the firstborn of all creation. Uh, there's no one born more important than Jesus. For by him, all things were created in heaven and on earth. John says this in John 1. God said, let there be light. And there was light in Genesis 1. And John, in the beginning was the word, God speaking. And the word was God, was with God. And the word was God. And, and, and God spoke the word saying, let there be light. And there was light. Uh, and in him, there's no darkness at all. Um, all things were created through him uh, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. I don't know if Paul was thinking of spiritual forces, but boy, in our day with microscopes and electron microscopes, uh, they, all things he created, things that Paul couldn't even imagine, God created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. They created by him, through him, and for him. And he is before all things. And in him all things hold together. How does this expanding, exploding universe hold together? Well, he is the bond that holds all things together, that creates unity. Then the new creation he is the head of the church excuse me the head of the body the church he is the beginning the firstborn from the dead that in everything he might be preeminent there we had that firstborn phrase again the the firstborn of the dead I, I, again pointing to the resurrection that in everything he may be preeminent he is above all, over all, Lord of lords and King of kings, and every knee shall bow, as we heard in Philippians. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. The story of Jesus creating the world and through his death on the cross, bringing new life, new creation, uh, through the fullness of God who died on the cross for us. Rich, deep theology, and, and all lifting up Jesus as preeminent. Um, verse, uh, verse 21. And you, who once were alienated and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds. This would be, in Pauline thinking, all people, Jews and Gentiles. He has now reconciled. He has brought you close back to God, not separated from God through sin like Adam and Eve, 
but now through Christ, you have been brought cl closer back into the presence of God, into the eternal life he gives. He has now reconciled in his body of flesh by his death in order to present you holy and blameless and above reproach before him because, of course, you are absolutely forgiven. Good evening, Mark. Good to see you. And thanks for meeting me today to help that one person, even though um, what he, what I'd heard he needed, he didn't need. Thank you for coming out to, to be with me. It was good to see you. And uh, it's still a work in progress. He's taken off to, uh, to home in Wisconsin and has left a vehicle here in the parking lot. Hopefully he'll be back for it in a few days. Um, so we're again with Paul, um, who's talking about the preeminence of Christ. Uh, and, and how he has saved us, reconciled in his body of flesh by his death, in order to present you holy and blameless and above reproach before him, because you are forgiven of your sins. If indeed, and this is that surprising word, if indeed you continue in the faith, stable and steadfast, not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you heard. Well, here's an introduction to the, which I'll talk about more tomorrow an introduction to the problem that Epaphras has brought, uh, that, that there, there's, a, there's a, something happening to the church in, in uh, Colos um, that is threatening the church. And, and Paul is beginning here to lift up Jesus as preeminent and that, to say you need to stand firm because there's only one way that you've been made blamed blameless and holy and reconciled it's in the body of jesus nothing else has done this for you only christ alone and that will continue if there's a danger these these christians in colas are facing and paul is going to fight for these christians if indeed you continue in the faith the faith in jesus who created all things and has form the new creation if you continue in the faith stable and steadfast not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you heard which has been proclaimed in all creation under heaven and of which I Paul became a minister the gospel message brought to Ephesus and from Ephesus to Colossus through Epaphras uh, the message that's spreading around the world Paul is a minister so is uh, Epaphras and you heard the gospel don't abandon the gospel. Paul talks about his suffering from a very peculiar or interesting way. The suffering he's had for years in prison in Caesarea and now in prison in Rome. Now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake, for the sake of the gospel, for proclaiming that Jesus and Jesus alone is Lord. Not the law, not anything else. Jesus is Lord. I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake. And in my flesh, I am filling up what is lacking in Christ's affliction. Jesus was afflicted. And as one of the seminary professors for our, our, our church says, if you're going to follow Jesus, you have to look good on wood. He was on wood and his followers, he said, take up your cross and follow me. Well, Paul has certainly done that. Um, for the sake of his body, that is the church, of which I became a minister, according to the stewardship from God that is given to me for you, to make the word of God fully known. That's why he's in prison. And, and the sign that he's in prison is the sign that he might, must be on the right track because he's facing the same opposition that, that Jesus faced. And so this holding true to the gospel message, almost being in prison is proof that the message he is proclaiming is the true message. So pay attention church in Colossus. The, um, this, this stewardship of, of God that was given to me to be a proclaimer of the gospel given to me for you to make the word of God fully known. The mystery hidden for ages and generations but now revealed to his saints. To them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of, the, of his glory. This is the same mystery he has spoken about in, in, in Romans and in in, in, especially in Ephesians. This mystery hidden for the ages and generations, 
uh, the Gentiles are the or to them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of glory the glory of this mystery which is Christ in you the hope of glory Christ in you for Jews but they thought they'd earned it but for Gentiles that just explodes the situation it makes absolutely clear we are saved by God's grace alone this mystery which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, him we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone with all wisdom that we may present everyone mature. Um, him we proclaim, warning everyone. There's that word, danger. Danger from thinking you need something more than Jesus or that you don't need Jesus. You're self-sufficient. There'd be a warning too for that. Or you need Jesus plus something else warning danger in him we proclaim him we proclaim warning everyone and teaching everyone with all wisdom that we may present everyone mature in christ growing up in christ isn't becoming more skilled at keeping the commandments but growing into the maturity of christ's grace and christ's power at work in our lives so that so that we may be filled with the knowledge of him, of his will, so that we may walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, that we may bear fruit in every good work, that we may be strengthened to endure, and that we may be of thanks. These, this opening prayer just leads us right back to Jesus and, and this preeminence of him for the church. Well, that ends our... our for this, Paul, and last verse, verse 29, for this I toil struggling with all his energy that he powerfully works within me toil it's work but he, he's empowered he struggles with energy but it's not his god gives him the energy and god will give you the energy to do what he asks you to do will you follow him will you trust in him your power won't be sufficient but his grace is all sufficient well thank you for joining me tonight as we introduce Colossians chapter 1, and tomorrow we get into uh, the second and third and fourth chapter on Monday. Well, God bless you. Let me close with a word of prayer. Lord, uh, thank you for Vacation Bible School going on and how we learn today that you strengthen us. You answer our prayers for our need for strength by often sending, to, sending people into our lives to help us and Lord sometimes you send us into the lives to help others so we pray for Lord we thank you for those who have who have been of help to us and we pray Lord that you would lead us to be of help to others we thank you Lord for this word in Colossians about Christ and Lord help us to hear your call to grow and mature in you to Lord know your will and, and uh, seek to walk according to your will in a manner that pleases you and that we might bear fruit, that we might be strengthened. We will need that. And, and, that, and that, Lord, we may uh, give thanks in all circumstances. I pray your blessing on us, Lord, as we continue now into, into Colossians to see where the danger is uh, lurking in our culture today as it was in Paul's. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow evening. Hope to be on before 9, hopefully about 8.30. Uh, but I, I got behind today with uh, being gone so much. And uh, But I'm glad to be, I was glad to be with you. And please remember, God loves you. And so do I. Bye-bye.